Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Blender 2.8 is almost here and it has so many great new features that I think everybody is going to want to at least try it. Now when you jump in and you go to try it, you may quickly notice, hey wait, my keys don't work. And that is another major change in Blender 2.8. There was a heavy duty user interface overhaul and part of that also includes a complete change to the way keyboard shortcuts work. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to look at the greatest hits, the biggest new changes in Blender 2.8's keyboard shortcuts. And I think for the most part you'll agree they are more more consistent and cleaner in design. I think that for the most part we have definitely improved the usability but some people are definitely going to be frustrated and sometimes change is just annoying in the first place. You've developed all of that muscle memory to work one way then you're gonna switch over to this new system and you're gonna be like Ugh. So I know some of you are going to be frustrated by this. Now kind of ironically back in June of 2018 when Blender 2.8 was really just beginning, I did a video on the shortcut changes uh, back then. Don't bother looking that up because they are all completely meaningless. And to be honest, some of the choices they made back in those days, they weren't so good. Uh, so what I found that they've ultimately settled on as we get closer and closer to Blender 2.80 final release is the choices they have made are more pragmatic. They make a lot of sense. Now what you're gonna see is the the keys are focused heavily down the left hand side and across the bottom towards the space bar. So there's a good solid orientation towards if you're a left-handed person or sorry, left hand rest on your keyboard person, the, the flow is very good. It is vertical along the left hand column using the control, the shift, the caps, the tab, the Exonic Rob and the escape key. Now I know Exonic Rob is going to cause a couple of problems on some computers because they may not necessarily have that key. And unfortunately I don't have a computer without that key so I can't promise you what the end result is. So without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at the greatest hits of what has changed. Now the first one and the biggest one is going to be this. That is the tab key. I will have the key displayed up on screen here so you can see what I am pressing. But the tab key is, uh, it's definitely changed. So before it used to be control tab to switch between modes. Um, so if you want to go into like uh, edit mode, you do control tab over to edit, and then you could do control tab one, control tab two, control tab three to go between uh, vertex, edge, and polygon modes. Well, what, have, what you have now is tab is just switches between object and edit mode, and that's it. But once you're in edit mode, you can use one. So you watch up here, you see you're in vertex mode. If I hit the two button, we are now in the uh, edge select mode and three, we are now in polygon editing mode. So a bit of a cleaner design overall. Now on top of that, one of the major things with this overhaul is they've embraced radial menus. If you're from a Maya background, you will recognize these immediately, Pi menus that pop up. And one of the most important Pi menus they've got now is the control tab. And this is basically what control tab used to do, but now it pops up a menu. So if you want to switch between edit mode, texture paint, vertex paint, weight painting, object mode, and sculpting mode, you can do all of that using the control tab key. You'll also notice to the side of each number, there is a number there. So if I want to switch into sculpting mode, I could also just hit two. So you can do control tab two and you will switch over into sculpting mode. For the most part, I love all of those changes across the board. It's definitely an improvement in my opinion. Now another major change, and this one also really affects me, is the way that viewports work. Now the way it used to be is you used to switch into uh, laptop emulation mode. Most people running on a laptop anyways would switch into it so that uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 I think were all your major camera angles, front, right, so on and so forth. Uh, that has all changed in this release. So you don't need to use those numbers like you used to, same way you, you can still use a number pad but you don't need to it. It's nowhere near as required. First off, you now have this nice little widget for switching between view modes quickly, which is very, very handy. And you can also rotate on it for arbitrary rotations. But on top of that, a new widget there, there's also a keyboard shortcut change for this. And this is where your Axon Agrav comes in. Now that is again the key in between tab and the escape key on most keyboards. It should be the top left corner of your key down one. You hit that key and you will get a radial menu of the various different view options that are available there. So this basically corresponds to these options here. You don't have to use this guy at all if you don't want to, uh, but it's a nice quick way to jump between viewports. And once again, you can hit the number corresponding. So if in this case I hit eight, next, we jump to the top view. So uh, again, another very clean, consistent layout. Even if you don't like these pop-ups, you basically, you can just ignore them, just do the number combo, pretend that pop-up never even happened, but it is a nice, much nicer way to switch between views than the old keyboard emulation mode, at least on a traditional laptop. Now, once again, if you have a number pad like I'm showing you right here, the traditional number pad controls still work, as do uh, one, seven, three, and then I believe control, one, 
um, one, seven, three, and nine will jump between your predefined views as well. So if you still are using a number pad keyboard, this changes nothing for you. But this use of the Exonic Grab for switching between cameras quickly is so much nicer than the whole kind of nonsensical laptop emulation mode that you used to use before if you did not have a number pad in um, installed. So I definitely like this change for sure. Now, speaking of Exonic Grab, we got another one here, and this is fly mode or WASP key mode. If you hit shift, and the Axonic Grav key. We will switch into, let me make sure that I'm highlighted, Shift Axon, and now you'll see I am in fly mode. Now, another thing you may notice, and I can't show you with my mouse cursor because I'm in fly mode, but at the bottom, they've got a list of controls in this particular mode. But now what you can do is basically fly around the scene in first person control mode. Now, there was an option here before, but it's definitely been promoted up to more of a first-class citizen keyboard mode. And I actually use uh, FPS mode a lot for positioning. Uh, and then once you've got it where you want, you can left-click to end, or you can undo it all by hitting escape, and it will go back to wherever you started from. I, another nice change, in my opinion. The next change I'm a little less eh, about, because it's animation playback. And this was one of, the, one of the areas where I think they had a bit of an argument, because it used to be when you first loaded up Blender, you could choose the default behavior here. But what they decided was, you'll look down here in my timeline, hitting the space bar. Oops. No idea what I just minimized off screen there. But if I hit the space bar with this guy focused, you'll notice it starts and stops animation. So you're wondering, okay, well, where is my search menu there? Well, your search menu is available on F3 now. Exact same functionality as before, uh, but it is now no longer on space. It is on F3. Personally, I would rather have they, they put space on um, the search instead of space on play, uh, but that's what they ultimately went with. I imagine there is a way to change the configuration of this. It used to be, like I said, you could go into the splash screen um, and change it there, but that option has been removed. So it seems like they're settling on space bar for animation play like this, and then F3 for search. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the F3 key, if you are in an editing mode, so for example, if I do F3 now and I do bevel, I get nothing. If I hit the tab key, so I switch into edit mode, and then I hit F3, that context search, so you see I've got options for bevel because it is a context and mode sensitive search mode. Um, so again, I really wish this was on space, and I'm going to do a little research to find out if I can switch that back to space. But for by default, they move that up to F3. On the topic of the F keys, we also have F1, which is a context sensitive help. It's iffy in terms of how it works. But the one that I do like is F4, brings up a menu. So if you're over a window, I can do things like splitting it or toggling it out full screen and so on. Uh, so if I wanted to split this window instead of having to come up to the corner and drag it out, I can do now do an F3, a vertical split, pick where I want the split to happen. That's definitely a nice improvement. So that's F4 uh, is used for dynamic window controls. And back to that whole space bar thing, there has been a lot of changes there as well. So as I mentioned, uh, space bar is play. You can do control space bar to go full screen. You can do that on any window. Um, so if I was focused over here, it would full screen this particular guy. Uh, we can also do, I believe it's Alt and Space Bar. No, nope, not Alt. Oh, wait, nope, it's Control Shift Space to do a play in reverse. So if I highlight here, Control Shift Space, we'll go the opposite direction, Space Bar to stop and reverse in the opposite direction. So if you're an animator, you definitely got some nice stuff. So Space Bar is now all about animation timeline and window maximizing, minimizing. So Space Bar, Control Space Bar, uh, I think Shift Space Bar, oh no, Shift Space Bar is your context menu. Uh, on top of that, uh, we've also got another major change, which is the Q key. You'll see here, and we've got nothing in it. Now, this isn't really that exciting, uh, but what this allows you to do is take any menu item and add it to your quick favorites. So right now, I have no quick favorites, but what I can do is I can come over here to this time side, this um, sidebar here, and I can expand it out. And this is another cool thing with uh, the way things work now. So you can expand things out to get them into a single column, dual column, or full description mode like this. But what you can do is you can take any object here and you can say right click. So if say I want to inset faces, I use that all the time. I can add that to my uh, face, um, my quick favorites. So I can do here and add another one to quick favorites. And edge slide, we'll add that to the quick favorites as well. So now when I'm over my mouse here or over my object that I'm working on, I can hit Q and all of those quick favorites are there for me to use. Uh, so that's definitely a neat new feature that they've got going on as well. And then the one final thing to show before I wrap this up is the new Z key. Now, Z key is all about X-ray. Uh, so what I can do is highlight over an object. If I hit the Z key, you see we get uh, 
a look over so I could switch into like wireframe mode, for example, go to solid mode, or Alt Z is a toggle between X ray and not X ray. And this is something I turn on and off all the time. So it's definitely something I use. Now, one thing you probably will notice is pretty much 99.9% .9 of what I just showed you is on the full left hand side or is one at most two rows over from that, with the farthest travel being the F3 key and the spacebar key. And I like that. They've really clustered keys together and it does make one-handed operation very very smoothly the other thing that you'll probably have noticed is there is a lot more of the use of the pi and radial menus and again i also think that's really clever even if you just look at pi as a quick reminder of what the hot key you use next is so if i want to switch to render mode i can just do z8 i'm in render mode z4 i'm back in wireframe mode etc so for the keyboard warrior nothing has really gotten worse uh, i think the only contentious point that I found is that space seems to no longer be user configurable. And I think that will change in time. Hopefully that will change before final release or hopefully I'm just an idiot and I'm doing it wrong. And if I am an idiot and I am doing it wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. So that is the new kind of flow or workflow for Blender 2.8. I honestly, I do think it is a lot more consistent. I think it'll be a lot easier for people to learn. I think it encourages exploration a lot more. There's nice customization. I do like the quick um, favorite and you'll notice that there are no quick favorites right now because I am in object mode, switch back to edit mode, and they're contextual once again. And I like that. I think I think just about everything that they've done has been a pro positive improvement in my humble opinion, especially for someone that does not normally have a number pad. I love the new widget controls. I love the new um, camera switching controls. That is all an improvement in my head in my opinion anyways. So what do you think? These are, I think, going to be Blender 2.8's pretty much final default settings. Do you think this is an improvement on Blender 2.79 or are you gonna stick with Blender 2.79 or are you going to turn Blender 2.80 into 2.79 as fast as human possibly? I would love to know, comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye for now.